There's nothing more special than that day to day when you work in a lab like the garden. The work that we're doing is really exciting here in the games research lab. We're in an environment where we make games that will have real value in people's lives. I think games have the potential and power to really move society forward. Games can be transformational that way. We started so well. Now, now we're having some problems. You're going to roll the die for us to see how bad it is. I'm uh, Mariantina Gotsis. I'm a professor of practice at the School of Cinematic Arts. And I direct the Garden Lab, which is the lab of the Creative Media and Behavioral Health Center. It's a garden where things grow. It also reminds us that we need a lot of diversity for that to happen, diversity of thought, all other attributes that are really necessary to solve challenges. We can't move this anymore, but that's fine. This is we have students from high school to postdoctoral, all ages, all different backgrounds. Every discipline you can imagine, the, the more we can combine them, the more innovative they are in terms of how they solve problems. Okay, let's see how bad it is. Roll the die. We think about perhaps very innovative tools or treatments or transformative algorithms, things like that. But for me, the most impact I can have is by creating new minds, <laughs> stimulating minds and challenging conversations about things that maybe people wouldn't talk about other times. <laughs>
one of the things that's beautiful about horses, there's a relationship or a bond between horses and humans that doesn't necessarily exist the way it has traditionally when we used horses for labor and every family had a horse and the horse was part of like how you accomplished some of your daily work and activities. Um, now that we have cars and other ways to accomplish that, our relationship with horses have changed. But one thing that hasn't changed is the bond and the way in which horses respond to humans and humans respond to horses. So the theory is that if we want to really change what corporations look like today and what their values are and to progress professional careers for people of color or for marginalized community or underrepresented communities, is that this can be accomplished through equine practices. What I'm learning is that it's really hard to do that, to think about like what does it take to put a horse in a computer and make it behave the way it does in the real world. So I'm trying to find other ways to accomplish that same goal. Games take a long time. Good games take years. That's like <laughs> the worst card in the deck. Frequently exposed to drug and alcohol abuse. The Brain Architecture game was a project that, over the course of several years, engaged with more than 12,000 people. It teaches the science of stress and how toxic stress damages the architecture of the brain. Oh my god. Wow. Mental health does not exist in the ether. We learn. We're learning machines. And the things that we learn sometimes are not the right things for us. And the accumulation of really experiences that perhaps we shouldn't be having at all in our lives, like abuse or neglect, these can live a, a lasting impact in people's lives. Oh, oh my no. god. So read, a, read the card. Witness domestic violence. Oh no. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. Okay. <laughs> However, with a lot of effort and with a lot of social support, people can transcend. We have to really invest in early life as much as possible, and we'll spend less in late life for sure if we do that. Help Cass make these words. We have a game called Literosity. It's a dyslexia intervention tool or game. In Literosity, you as a player will have been identified as having a reading challenge or a learning difficulty or dyslexia. As many as one in five children are dyslexic. What's really important are two things. One, that we don't shame or label the player. We don't want them to feel as though their dyslexia is a limit or their reading challenges is a limit. It is in the real world, but I don't want the game to come back and reinforce that. It's a struggle enough, right? What we're really focused on is having the player learn alongside this character named Kaz. And Kaz is the one that we say has dyslexia. Kaz is the one that's struggling. You as a player, you're gonna learn as you're helping Kaz to learn. And we think this teaching the learner, learning with the learner, might be a really interesting approach to allowing students to really engage with the type of activities that we have. Great job! In many ways, the intervention is actually on us and the students, from the participants who come in into our research. And this loop creates lasting change because as we interact with people, try to solve problems, I think it's hard to tell who is the one who's receiving the intervention. The opportunity for games is to take us to the next level in our understanding on how we engage with one another. Games can be a vehicle for expression and an emotional expression, and I think that's where we need to think about things versus you won, I lost. I won, you lost. It's so binary. There's other things, especially as we're starting to understand the world can be way more fluid. I think our games can start to reflect that.